Hey, what's up guys? Sean back with another video and Angie J part two, the meanest lady from my 600 pound life. At least that's what everyone likes to say. I'm not sure if she's that mean yet. She's pretty toxic though. But this is her where are they now after she got kicked out in the first episode for all these substances in her blood or whatever. I thought she, I guess she thought she was going to trick doctor now or something into letting her into the program. But she seemed to think she was pretty entitled and that she had dropped like 45 pounds and she deserved surgery. Nobody could stop her. Doctor now just had to give her what she wanted. But uh, that has led us right here to this moment. So let's see what's going on with her right now. So things haven't really gone like how I thought they would. Ooh, a Bible. My personal life and my family life and in my weight loss journey. It's been a couple of months since I last saw Dr. Now because I'm no longer on his program. So things... This guy is still wearing the same shirt from last episode. Dr. Now's kicked her out and it don't look like she's lost any weight thus far. Things kind of suck right now because me and Justin came down here for me to get help. And that kind of just blew up in my face. Um, first of all, do you want to eat lunch? Sure. You want to get the salads? Yeah. I think the dressings might be on the door. She's still doing this thing where she pretends she's eating salad so she's going to lose weight, but she's drowning it in dressing, and who knows what she's eating when the camera crew isn't around, because she hasn't really lost very much. She's up and down, up and down very much, though. So. We tried to go back to Ohio, but that's not an easy process. Because we gave up our place there, and we have a lease here on this place, so it looks like we're stuck here for a bit until we figure all that out. Desiree won't let me stay with her if Justin's with me, which is... That's because Desiree don't want to deal with your crap, but you're kind of stuck in, like, weight loss purgatory at this point. You came all the way to Houston, and now you're just shit out of luck, lady. Like, you need to do the diet... Or, I, I don't know, maybe you could start hustling somewhere, but Ohio probably has a surgeon, but they're not going to do it for free or do it without all the, like, prior offs and stuff you would need that like Dr. Now is going to do for you since you're on the show. Pretty freaking ironic if you think about it, considering how I let her baby daddy shack up at my place. That don't make no damn sense. But I'm not doing Dr. Now's program because I don't need rehab, but I'm not just giving up. So I came to the conclusion that it's time for me to take this weight loss journey into my own hands while I'm here in Texas. All right, maybe she's actually gonna make some progress for us this time. Cause she keeps saying she's gonna prove everybody wrong, this and that, and then she don't do a whole hell of a lot of nothing. So I'm still working to do the diet and exercise program, but I'm doing it my way. You know, I eat a reasonable amount of food one or two times a day. And I don't have a diet plan. I just don't buy stuff that I'm not allowed to eat. But if you don't buy stuff you're not allowed to eat, that's a diet. But also, do you guys buy that she's eating once a day? Because that face does not tell me I'm eating once a day. This is intermittent fasting. I don't think so. This is a seafood diet. We see food, we eat it. But I don't really count calories and stuff like that. I don't drive myself crazy. I'm done. You can put the rest of this in the refrigerator, please. <laughs> you know, I figure I could still prove Dr. Now wrong if I made some progress. And there could be a chance if I do that and lose more weight. Maybe he'll see that he was wrong about things and apologize. Dr. Now is never wrong, first off. And, I mean, if spite is going to drive you to lose weight, spite it up, lady. Whatever you got to do, I'm here for it. Are you ready to do your walking? Yeah. Okay. But the bottom line for me is that I'm not going to sacrifice my pride for anything. And if that means that I can't get the help that I should have, then I'll try to find another way to do it. So that's pretty much where I'm at right now. There's a reason pride is a sin. For most guys, it gets in the way a hell of a lot. But uh, hopefully, 
she can somehow use it in a positive way. So far, Pride has been letting her down so damn far. But I guess tender cardio or something. Maybe Justin's not getting the job done. We could burn some calories somehow. And Justin is helping me when he can. Except when we're fighting. When we fight, he's not much help. But times like now, he's there for me. I have to keep trying to be successful on this journey because I want to live. I mean, that's the ultimate reason. So I'm just trying to make progress and hope that somehow another door opens for me. Since the one that... She's making progress. And didn't we just cut the door out in the last episode? So we don't need it to open. We removed it so we could get through it. But she's walking. People will laugh at you for just like walking across the living room. She's trying. That's something. And you'd be shocked at like how big of a deal that is when you're used to only getting around with a walker. So I'm actually proud of her for even trying to walk that I made all the sacrifices for got slammed in my face, basically. But I'm still stuck here, so I'll try to make the most of it. And if Dr. Now isn't going to help me like he should, I won't let it get worse by giving up on myself. I just hope that it doesn't get to where it's too late for me because I wasn't given the help that I need in time. He should, should, he should, you should lose weight. You should diet. Doctor now should be trying to help you, which he is. You're the one in your way. So you can get the hell out of the way, see the light at the end of the tunnel, and know that there's a better future for you if you change your lifestyle. Or you can sit here and we can stare at your booty shot right now. Why does... Oh, my God. But my hope is, if I make more progress, then Doctor now will see he was wrong. And I'll show him that and maybe get a second chance. Life is full of second chances. We sit here and live in regret, or we sit here and progress and do something better for ourselves. Hey, help me, son. Come out there. Yeah. Today, I'm seeing a therapist because I have been having some issues, and I wanted to try to talk to someone who understands. Are we seeing Dr. Pleasure or the other lady? I like the other lady. Dr. Pleasure is just a little weird to me. I think that's his name. Something like that. The Love Island, Dr. Pleasure. No, it's, it's Paradise. Dr. Paradise, that's it. This past month has been messed up for me. It's just been hard. Justin and me are fighting. Sometimes we're not, but most times we are. And you know, he's the only person I know down here who I have to be helping me. So when we have an issue, it makes me feel really alone. So it's a WWE of Weight Watchers, pretty much. But these two fight back and forth nonstop. I really don't think there's any... I, I don't know. There's a whole a lot of love lost here. These two do not like each other, in my opinion. And I don't always know if I can trust him. Especially because he's disappeared on me before. So I've just been depressed and feeling stuck and trapped. So I call Dr. Now. Not because I think he's right about what he wants me to do. But he said if I need help to ask him, so I did. Because I thought... This is probably the happiest I've ever seen Justin. So he got away from you for a little bit. He comes back all cheery. So maybe that says something about your guy's marriage. Maybe there's something that he can prescribe to help. He wouldn't give me any medication for my mental stuff. And that kind of sucked. But he refilled my heart medicine. Mm. And he told me he'd set me up to start therapy if I wanted. Okay, I think he's been prescribing you a diet this whole time, but you haven't seen too keen on that plan. Like, you need to just stick to the program. He'll get you in there, you'll get the surgery, you'll be in a much better mental headspace. So I said I'd do that because I actually do want to talk to someone about things. Because I feel like I'm pretty close to hitting rock bottom. And I figure something's got to work or else things are going to get bad. Yep, here comes Dr. Pleasure, the Pleasure Island guys here. Hi there, I'm Dr. Paradise. Hello. I'm Justin. Hi, How are Justin, you? Justin, good to meet you. Oh my god, I thought somebody was trick-or-treating for a second. No, he I didn't realize I knew he was short, but I didn't realize he was way down there. He's nipple level on that guy. Hello. You Angie? Yes. Hi, Angie. I'm Dr. Paradise. Hello. Good to see you. Nice to meet you. 
That's my husband. Yeah, I'm taking off for a little bit. The rest is you, I'm done. Can I grab that chair? Yeah. You're good? Mm-hmm. So tell me about yourself. Uh, is that a George Foreman grill sitting there that's got no use at all? There's probably a deep fryer in the background. That thing just sits there for the camera crew so they'll think they're eating healthy. Um, <clears throat> well, I am from Ohio. Mm-hmm. lived in Ohio my whole life. Okay. Tell me about your family. I'm the oldest of 12 kids. Really? Wow. Yeah. 12 kids? Holy hell, your mom was busy. She was making a whole damn baseball team while she was at it. So you're the big sister. Yep. Tell me about your parents. What was going on in your house? My mom's an alcoholic, and my dad was like a drug addict, but I didn't really know that he was a drug addict okay. because he... You were young enough to not, right. not realize that. He would find out things that my mom did. Well, my mom, I guess, had like affairs on him and stuff. I'm not really shocked in that household. I think you're probably having an affair on Justin if he would leave. If you were mobile, I'm convinced that you would be banging the mailman or something. The pizza delivery driver. And, um, he would like, hit my mom and stuff like that. You, re- you remember that? Yeah. 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 How old? Was, How old do you remember it? Maybe seven or eight. Seven or eight. So even as a, as a that would be like a second grader. Yeah. Even as a second grader. I'll never understand men that get that mad and they decide to go that direction instead of just walking away. Walk away from an argument. Especially if you're arguing with her, Justin. She's not going to catch you or anything. She's not going to run you down and keep arguing. Do you remember your dad coming home? Yeah, my mom. Yeah, my mom was always hurt. One time he, like, tied her to a couch with belts and what she was drinking, and he tore a beer can in half and he tied it to the couch and he cut her with the beer can on her what kind of S&M weird house is this that is just psychotic I've never even heard of somebody just straight slicing someone with a beer can after they belt them to a couch breast like to make a mark or yeah he marked like an X on her no kidding you were there for that we were sitting on the steps watching Wow. Yeah. Okay. You were the oldest, too. Mm-hmm. So you understood it most. Mm-hmm. But as we got older, like, I got really close to my dad. Like, like I was always with my dad. My dad was the only person I could rely on, literally. Before... Th- your dad was also a psycho. He's treating your mom like that, so you become daddy's little angel? That's so weird, because... With parents, typically you'll pick one. You're either like a mama's boy or you're like your father's son. But I'm definitely a mama's boy. I'm, I love my dad. Mama's boy all the way. That. You're in a house with all this violence. Any Anything happened to you? Um, no. Nobody, no hit, one, nobody hit you? No, we, no, my mom didn't. I mean, I didn't get spanked or whooped or whatever. Okay. My mom just like used me as like a another mom she's out she always relied on me for everything well she's gonna need some damn help she cannot like take care of 12 kids so you officially become babysitter big sister at that point they take care of the kids they do everything she was like always drunk and so i basically was just like mom do you remember what that felt like as a as a it, it must have been eight nine years old you were acting like a parent mm-hmm at the time, I didn't think there was anything wrong with it, but now when I look back on it, like I'm, like our relationship now is so bad, it's so strained, and then. Mm-hmm. Well, no wonder she became a mom herself at 13, so she grew up way too fast. You gotta let a kid be a kid, man. Eight or nine years old, she's taking care of her siblings already. Like some kids have fun, like giving a bottle to their little brothers or sisters, but she's like actually a caregiver at that point because her mom's running the streets i think she said i don't understand because i i don't i feel like why you know she like she gets drunk and she says some mean things she says horrible things to me so she's still a big drinker yeah okay um when my mom got pregnant with me my mom's dad 
was not okay with it because my mom was only 16 and um, he wouldn't go to her wedding and uh, my mom held resentment against me because of it and oh. I'm like you guys all started pretty young but how how could you hold resentment against your daughter because you were that is the weirdest thing I've ever heard in my life I hate my unborn child because my dad wouldn't come to the wedding because I was what the hell so you were you were kind of a symbol of that disconnect with her dad yeah she told me mm -hmm. right she many 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 times straight up I she heard said her say my dad died hating me because I had you and and I wish I never had you what do you think that would do to a kid's belief about themselves if their mom bombarded them with that notion it's gonna f them up and make them turn to fritos for some freaking fun like oh man i didn't realize she had it like i know she had a messed up childhood from the last episode i didn't realize her parents were that mean-hearted towards her though i thought it was other people that were hurting her that i wish i never had you they feel terrible yeah it creates it creates that that core belief that you're worthless, right? Yeah. And my guess is that people, situations that make you feel like you're not worthwhile are gonna cause you to act like somebody who doesn't care about themselves and to make bad decisions. And when you think that you're worthwhile, you're gonna eat right, you're gonna be more active, and you're gonna be making decisions that lead you closer to getting the surgery and losing the weight for good. You know. Her self-worth had to be just absolutely destroyed. And that's one thing I notice about like myself or other people on the show. You feel almost no sense of self-worth when you're that big. You're just like, man, I'm a waste of space. There's no future for me. Like I'm just gonna end my life's gonna end soon, soon rather than later. So you just you don't feel like there's any hope for you. There absolutely is. I will just want to spread that message as much as I can. I wanted to have surgery in 2014 and I stopped. Um, hey, I stopped, me too. I stopped because my dad was sick, but he went. Oh, I stopped because I didn't want to follow through with it. Like I went to the meeting, I just didn't follow through. He wanted me to get it because when he was sick, after they treated him, he got a little better for a bit. And he told me that he was having so many, you know, things to be said to him at the hospital about his weight. Mm -hmm. There were things they couldn't do, you know, procedures they couldn't do because of his weight. And he was like, I want you to finish. You know, I want you to go do that and get your life back. I want you to promise me that you'll do that because I don't want you to. They'll definitely jump on you about your weight. And that's what, like, the Fat Liberation Star Trek army is all worried about. Like, doctors telling them their weight is going to cause an issue later in life. No shit, Sherlock. It's not a fun life to live when you get this big. To go through what I'm going through now. I mean, it's partly the reason that I'm here because I feel like I'm, I made that promise to him. But um, so I think it's it's really incredible that your dad gave you that at the very end. He said, "I want you to lose the weight. I want you to get healthy." Right? Hmm. He's saying you're worth living. I think we're just ignoring the fact that this guy was the Bud Light basher. Like, just because he said lose weight as he passed away, that makes the guy some kind of friggin' saint. I guess Dr. Pleasure is just looking for some kind of silver lining here. But, uh, this is not silver lining. This is fool's gold for sure. That's really what this is about, isn't it? Yeah. So tell me more about Justin. Justin and I... We don't have exactly a healthy relationship. I, I think that we could. I think mm -hmm. that it could it could potentially be a better relationship if... I don't see it. I don't think this one's going anywhere. You must have said you're going to divorce the guy at least 20 friggin' times already. Just in the first episode, it was at least a dozen. She hasn't thrown it around yet, but uh, he's going to get divorced if he doesn't go get your DoorDash order from the front door. Like, he's got one foot out, and you've got one foot in his ass, technically. We worked on it, or we tried a little harder. Um, sometimes I don't feel like he has, like, my best interests at heart, and it worries me um, because it's the only person that I have right here right now.
So let's talk about how you could communicate that to him. What would the words you would use? Get me food or get the F out. That's what she keeps saying, right? That's how she's been going about it so far. Go to the grocery store or I'm going to kick you in the gooch. I think she said that in the last one. B. I don't know. Like, our communication is not that great. So, so let me give you an alternative. I want you to schedule meetings with him. Okay. I want you to set a meeting with him. I don't know, every couple days where you sit and you plan to talk about these things. You guys live together. What do you need to schedule a meeting for? This is pillow talk, right? Do you really schedule meetings to talk to your husband? Or do you guys just sit there and, like, nag their ear off? I think that's typically how it works. Sometimes they call it a marriage meeting. Yep. So you could schedule marriage meetings to talk about that stuff. Again, not when you're upset, not when you're angry. You don't schedule it in reaction. You schedule it in advance, proactively. Probably twice a week is plenty. Why don't you guys just anger bang and get over it like the rest of the like world? Okay, so, so it's, it's not a meeting to be mad at each other. It's a meeting to check in. And I'm sure you have time for it. Yep. So I want She's high as a kite right here, too. I didn't really catch on until just now, but she can barely keep her eyes open. I want to give you some homework. As you go through even just your day, I want you to notice the two categories. There seems to be a part of you that cares about yourself, is taking care of yourself, thinks that you have value. And then there's a part of yourself that thinks that you don't have value. And she tends to be the one that gets you in trouble, right? Look, it is so easy to look down on yourself. It don't matter if you're healthy, overweight, whatever. I guarantee there's something in your life that makes you feel like, man, I'm just not worthy of this. I'm. You'll look down on yourself in a lot of cases, right? I wish everyone would just walk out the door and think, man, I'm the shit. I'm friggin' awesome. Forget about all this that happened yesterday. Today's a fresh day. I'm the best in the world. And that's how I think you should go about life. So I want you, as you walk through the day, think, try to figure out which mind you're in when you make a decision. Is that the mind of the person who cares about themselves, who thinks that they have worth? Is that who's making this decision? Or is it the worthless version of you? And I want you to treat yourself like somebody you care about. Okay. Somebody you think we probably should stop treating ourselves. We're on a damn diet, but I get what he's saying. Is worthwhile. So Andrew, it was great to meet you, and um, I'm super optimistic for you. Thank I, you. I want to think you're going to be a success, and I think you've got what it takes to be a success. I hope we get to meet again, and um, we'll keep in touch. Okay. Great. I'm not sure at all that this lady's going to be a success. I hope so, but at this point. Uh, I think she's going to be a divorced <laughs> diabetic. That's where we're heading for sure. And when she's feeling bad about herself, she tends to make worse decisions and gets herself into more trouble. And she really digs holes for herself. So I don't see her digging any holes because there's no shot we're going to get out of it. But then again, the only hole you can't dig yourself out of is the grave, my favorite saying. We need to figure out a way to chain successes together for her so that she can feel good about herself and make the right decisions. And she needs to be resilient in the face of small failures to keep moving. Yep, sticks and stones may break my bones, but chains and whips excite me, Rihanna. I saw a pretty clear link there with her behavior and acting like she was worthless and gaining weight. And I'm not sure she's picked up on that. She really needs to turn that around in order to move forward. I think she needs to stop getting litty and then she'd be all right. She probably would be in a much better headspace if she just got off of the junk or whatever she's on. The doctor now keeps finding in her blood that they won't tell us what exactly it is. We haven't really talked much about my therapy session since then. But I did tell Justin that today I wanted to make time to talk about some stuff. Uh-oh, run, Justin. I ain't never seen a conversation between you two go well. And I think you better hit the road, Jack, because uh, she's going to kick you out eventually anyway. Including how my therapy went. And he said we can do that. So I'm hoping this will be the start of us agreeing to do something like this every week, like Dr. Paradise said. Because I do think if we're not right, then we fight. And when we fight, I feel like I want to give up. 
So I want to change that. I want to work on our communication so that we get closer and we get better. So. She's wearing all black like it's a funeral. Yeah, it's your guy's wedding's funeral. This, this relationship ain't going to last. I'll call it now. I'm pretty good at seeing things like this. And I don't know. Maybe, I'm trying to be a psychologist again. Let's just keep going. So I'm hoping that this helps do that. So counseling. How'd it go? I mean, it went, it went all right. He helped with some things about our marriage because I told him that we had, like, communication problems. So he suggested that we do, like, a marriage meeting day. Our marriage meetings can be on Mondays. Like, certain, like, one day a week, like, we sit down and we talk with, like, no consequences, no nothing. We'd be open with each other. Like, if you were, if I did something that made you upset or you... Do you guys think there's no consequences for real? Or if she's just going to use that as ammo later on? Because I do not believe for a second when she says no consequences. That's a setup. Just like when they ask you what your celebrity crush is, you always answer a man. My answer was typically Justin Timberlake. And then I just found out he's a creep recently too from a YouTube video, which sucks. If I felt disrespected or anything, then you tell me and I do that with you, and then that's how we can fix it, instead of just holding on to things. Like, I don't know how to fix something that I'm doing wrong if you don't tell me. Right. And I'm pretty open with you. Like, I'm constantly telling you things all the time, like, so that's not really my, I don't really have a problem here. That's kind of something that you don't do. And you're gonna like, Men don't do that in general, though. We kind of hold all our stuff in until it just kind of explodes or boils over. That's a very bad quality to have, but a lot of men have trouble sharing stuff when they're upset about something. They'll just go about it until it just blows up in your face eventually. You need to start speaking up. You have to start talking more. I'll try. Except for, like, when you're drunk or, you know. But do you you, you know that, though? Yeah, you, I mean, I know. You know I just can't work physically work. say it like I can't. I know. I mean, I can't promise nothing. You made him cry? Oh, man, this guy's a friggin' sissy. She didn't even say anything bad yet. I gotta use the bathroom. That went exactly like I thought it would. Even though Justin got a little upset, I kind of expected that because... Sometimes Justin needs time to think about things. He's not really on the spot type of person, so. You just called him dumb in not so many words. Like, he can't come up with his own thoughts, so he's got to go in here, take a dump, and then just think about what he's going to come back with. He asking him something right on the spot. He doesn't really give me an answer, but then, like, later he'll answer me. So it wasn't exactly how I thought it would. And I do think this was a positive first step because, you know, I do feel like he listened and was in agreement to the meetings every Monday. This could lead us to be better together. So I think this was a good step and I feel a little more positive about things right now. And I'm hopeful. You're gonna need as much positivity as you can have, especially when you're fighting back from 643 pounds. You're gonna have to be really positive because if you get negative on yourself, you'll just start emotionally eating again and it's not gonna do you any favors. Well, I'm gonna keep doing therapy because I think it's all actually helping me move towards a better place. Good. And I'm starting to think that maybe I can actually do this. And so my big hope is that if I keep working and going the direction I am, that I'll get to a place soon where I've progressed enough to see if Dr. Now will take me back. But I'm yeah, that's called a diet. He's already told you, 100 pounds in two months, he'll give you the damn surgery. He just sets a bar and he's like, I need you to meet these expectations so I can do this for you. It's dangerous for him to cut your stomach out when you're still eating like a maniac. I'm not ready to try and reach out to him just yet because I don't want to mess up my chances by reaching out too early before I've done enough. And I'm hoping if I can make some significant progress with my weight in the next month or two, it'll be enough for him and I can reach out to him and maybe get my weight loss surgery. It may be a long shot, but at least I have hope, which is a big difference from where I've been even just a few months ago. So me and Justin are doing better. And for the first time in my life, or as long as I can remember, 
I'm starting to think that I actually have the ability to turn things around and change. So I'm gonna give this my all and work hard. And hopefully by some miracle, I'll finally get the weight loss surgery I need to save my life. It's not a miracle, it's a diet. But it's good to hear that she finally is starting to believe in herself a little bit, so maybe she really will turn it around. I didn't think she ever would from the last episode. Today, me and Justin are going to a cookout party with some newfound friends we made in our apartment complex. Ooh, we got invited to the cookout. Us white people love being invited to the cookout with the fire food. Come on. There's the water. Where? Oh, look how pretty. And you can see the water from the park. That's nice. Dr. Paradise thinks that another good step is for me and Justin to have other people we can spend time with. So it's not just us alone all the time. I would recommend having as many outside friends as possible because I don't think Justin can take the kind of soul beating that you give him on a daily basis from last episode. And I haven't seen it yet in this one, but I'm assuming it's coming. And with how well things have been going for the past month and a half, I felt more confident about engaging with people and putting myself out there and letting them see who I am kind of thing. Hey. Hey, girl, hey. hey you look beautiful. Mm -hmm. Hey, Mama V. Hey. Right here. We're getting to know... Well, this don't look like a regular cookout, man. Nobody's aunties are fighting. The last one I was at, there was even a lady walking down the street in high heels trying to sell her goods. They got attacked by two pit bulls, man. It was a crazy scene. Oh, some of the people around here, and they are the only thing that's making Houston bearable at this point. I feel safe with these people. We met them in our little complex where we lived, and we became family. I appreciate all of you guys for welcoming us to Houston. You know, it was scary coming here not knowing nobody. I'm glad that we had this chance to get together and hear you sing. <laughs> well, that might be a little bit better. I saw some deviled eggs and it looked like some scallops or shrimp or something. Maybe this was a better cookout than I thought. Imagine being a rapper and then <laughs> plugging your music on My 600 Pound Life. What the hell audience do you think you're going to get from this? middle-aged women there's no like young rap fans watching this i'm gonna look up this guy's music after this and see if it's any good or not i highly doubt it's any good if he's plugging it on tlc my name is whitey the kid and of course uh i met edgy because i do music and she loves music and when she told me that i showed her some of my stuff and she was like yeah that's really great it motivates me and i was like well i want to be an inspiration to you, you No, know, she tells a story about her coming all the way down from ohio so we're just here to be a support who you say that my 600 pound life and i like when that girl gives me that round I don't know what the hell I'm going with this one, but yeah, no, not feeling it, homie. You're plugging it on my 600 pound life. It's been a long time since I've been out, even out of my house. Hey, alone into the a kid's public turn. place where there's so many people and not feel uncomfortable. And I don't feel uncomfortable at all right now. So this is a big step for me, and I think it's because I'm gaining some confidence. So I'm feeling better than I have in a long time. Look. I think everyone needs a level of delusional confidence. I love it, man. I never hate when people are overly confident. I only don't like when people don't believe in themselves. Being able to do this makes me want to keep moving forward and try even harder. So I haven't even been trying to find ways to move back to Ohio because I'm committed to doing this down here. Oh my god, imagine if an alligator just popped out of there right now. How do you guys think she's getting away? Because I think she's toast, man. She's totally done for at that point. And you know, I feel like I'm coming a long way. And soon I could be at a good place to try to go back to Dr. Now. To show him that I'm turning my life around and getting healthy. Even when he pretty much gave up on me and told me I was off the program. I didn't let that keep me down. Oh, they're so in love. I didn't see this coming. I really thought the way she threw around divorce, this one gonna last. 
but we could do the alligator amputee diet. If we take a leg off, we'll qualify for the surgery. Like, any alligators around here? We can do a little crikey thing and cut some calories. I, that's all I'm saying. I kept pushing ahead and did what I needed. So I'm hoping Dr. Now sees that and realizes he was wrong. This ain't the kind of cookout I thought it was. They bought prepackaged potato salad. That is not how they're rocking. You know, they're making... The, somebody's auntie's putting her foot in that, and that stuff's going to be good. Instead of focusing on things that shouldn't be important. Like, who cares if I'm smoking now? As long as... They under the hell out of that chicken, too. What kind of family is this? I would have swore this was my family if, if I saw it, didn't see who was cooking it. As long as I'm getting mentally right... Even today, I eat grilled chicken, so I'm sticking to what I need on my own. And that should prove that I can do this without question. So I feel like I'm getting... Damn, that chicken got the good steroids, too. That thing is plump and pumped up, man. Like a, I, Ever since I started this kind of weight loss reaction channel, I get offered like the gear so much in my Instagram messages. And I usually troll them and ask them if they got any Cialis. And then they'll send me the price for Cialis. It's insane. Getting real close to where I get my second chance, which I know I deserve. And that everything I'm doing is going to pay off soon. Well, I guess it was too good to be true. Because Justin left me. A few days ago. What the hell? Ha we were just kissing each other saying I love you. Man, this is a fickle world we live in. That guy done switch. Oh... I'm thinking she found somebody else. No, she looks sad. She couldn't have been getting, like, tag-teamed by somebody from the party or anything like that. She's sad. So we were talking and having our times on Monday where we worked on communicating. And I was talking to him about how hard he makes it on me when he's not positive. And that led to a fight somehow. He just lost it on me for the whole day. Literally, he went on a rampage on Xanax. He kept... Oh, my God. The, of course he's not freaking positive. He's getting beat down by you 24 I really thought she was switching up. She was going to be a nicer person. Right back to her old ways and he's right out the door. But then again, he was not equipped to deal with his emotions. You saw him run to the bathroom to escape and think about his own thoughts. Screaming, like yelling and jumping. She was high. 30 long hours. He continued to just act like a crazy nutcase. He went out in the parking lot, pretending like his foot got hurt. Or that he tripped and fell on his foot, but I think he hurt his own. This turned into a my 600 pound insurance scam? That's insane. But I don't know, though. I was not there, but I went to the hospital for his foot. He relapses and poses his thing. And it's not the first time he's done it. He decided he was done and took off. And now I'm completely on my own, and I don't know what to do. And you know, I don't think I knew Justin. We need to get rid of the great drink, like right by the bed. You had it in the last one, too. I don't think that's sugar-free. And if she really is eating salad and grilled chicken all the time, she'd be a hell of a lot skinnier. We just lost like 100 pounds of Justin, so she's a little bit lighter. But now she's going to have to get up and move more, so she should lose some weight. So maybe I've been high for two and a half years, and I didn't know Justin. Maybe I'm getting sober now myself from all the pain meds are clearing my mind, and I see him for who he is. Maybe my clouded judgment is what married that idiot. I believed in Justin, so I feel very betrayed by him right now. And I believe in Justin, too. I believe in you, too, Angie. You can turn things around, and you are going to do it right now. You just lost a bad husband. You've been threatening to divorce for two years out of the two-year marriage. And uh, grass is greener on the other side, always, right? To top it off, all my medication got stolen. The day before he left, we were robbed during broad daylight. Bullshit. Justin took that. Like, he he snuck in there, got it, and said, All right, peace out. You're going to divorce me. I'm going to steal all of this. And they took my dad's ashes. That's the only thing I'm sad about. If they took your dad's ashes, it's definitely somebody that wanted to hurt you. It wasn't just a random thing. It's not like that they thought that your dad's ashes was blow or something. But with how it happened and when, it makes me wonder if Justin's the one that robbed me. But my heart medicine is all gone, so I don't have that. And this just sucks. 
Oh yeah, he's trying to kill you. He took the heart meds, like, he don't want you around here very much longer. And I don't get why he would take my heart medicine. If he did that, he gotta be sicker than I thought. I don't know, man. I thought we were... You broke his heart, so he's gonna make sure yours don't work anymore. We're doing so well. So this all just caught me by surprise. Even though it was always in the back of my mind that he was probably gonna leave me again. So I don't know what to do because I can't do this on my own. I have to have help, but I don't know how I'm going to figure that out. Desiree's still mad at me for giving Justin another chance in the first place. So the only person I could figure to ask for help is my friend Mandy. If Mandy comes all the way to Houston from Ohio just to help you out, she is definitely a real one. She's the best friend you've probably ever had in your life. Your daughter should forgive you, but she's got her own family going, and she's probably still getting uh, willied by Willie, so she really don't want to move to Houston either. But I don't know if she's going to be willing to leave Ohio in her whole life to come down here just to help take care of me. And she's already done so much for me to help me. I feel bad asking her to take more on. But I have to figure something out because I've come this far and I don't want this to end now. And Mandy told me when she left here to go back to Ohio that if I needed her, she'd come back. So I'm really hoping that that was true and that she meant that. Hello. Hey. Hello. Would you move to Houston though if like you knew she was kicked out of the program so there's no kind of like timeline going on or anything? You would just have to like believe that she is going to do the diet and get the program, get back in it and all that. It's a big long story, but to make it plain and simple, um, Justin left. I think we kind of knew this was gonna happen and you said it too. I didn't think it was gonna be this quick though. Hold on. That's what she said, but you also kind of spoke it into existence at this point, like, you were throwing divorce, divorce, divorce. What did you think was going to happen? My phone's about to die. Let me get the charger. He took the charger. Oh, no, he didn't. So I was wondering if... I would have took the charger. I would have been petty as shit. Like, <laughs> if you're going to go all out, you might as well... You took the heart meds. Come on, you're already trying to kill her. Why don't you kill her phone, too? If you can come out and help me. I know it sucks, but, like, maybe this is a good thing, you know? I got your best interest at heart, so I'm going to be right there, okay? Um, I'm coming. You have to come back, though, and I have to stay here. Ugh. I guess you're going to have to sign back up for Christian Mingle and find you another good man like Justin. Maybe I'll move my family down there. We'll yes. all come to Texas. Please. We're in this for the long haul. You know, I'm not going to take you down there and abandon you. Oh, she's high as a kite, too. Look at her. You're my homie. I'm glad that you're coming. I love you. I'll be there. Okay, I love you too. Alright, bye. Bye. That's a little bit of good news, I guess. But I feel like Justin leaving me has just set me back with my men. Is there a fork next to the phone? You were too lazy to put it in the sink, so you just left it by the George Foreman to use later? Mentality. And damage the progress that I've made for the past couple months. You know, I'm only holding it together right now because I am pretty high. And Shocker. I know once I come down, this is all going to be even worse. And I don't know what to do about that. Wait, how are we still all the way up here if he took everything from you? What is she on exactly? What kind of jello junk does she got? Maybe my next session with Dr. Paradise will help. It usually does, but what's scaring me is what if it doesn't? And what if I don't get my motivation back because I was so happy and excited these past couple months. We're going to have to talk to Dr. Pleasure about getting you a new man so you can get back on track. And now that makes me feel like an idiot for believing that things were getting better. I just feel betrayed and scared. And I don't know how to get past that to fix this. I'm just hoping somehow I'm able to figure it out. Uh, yeah, you'll figure it out. Eventually you'll decide that not being able to walk and not having anyone there to do anything for you makes life a lot friggin' harder and you're gonna have to get a move on or you're not gonna be around much longer. Damn, we need some WD-40. That sucker is squealing for help. Things just feel like they're going from bad to worse for me because I'm really struggling. 
Mandy is still trying to get down here. That better be powdered sugar on the table. She thought she could leave immediately, but there's stuff with her family she has to take care of. So in the meantime, I'm just stuck here on my own. And you know, my mentality is getting worse and worse to where I'm starting to think I should just give up at this point. You know, it would help me if Dr. Now could give me something for my mental state. No, she is not cutting lines. Oh my God. That is not powdered sugar, that is booger sugar. Oh my God. With the camera crew and everything, just no Fs given. Just so I can escape for a little bit. Justin took everything, and I just need a little help from Dr. Now. When I told him everything that's happened to me, you'd think that would make him a little sympathetic, but it didn't. And it scares me, because for- Oh no, she was scraping it off the table. Okay, she was not doing what I thought. It is not a substance, I don't guess. But, uh, Justin, somebody will find him eventually, and we'll, I want to know what the hell happened to him. Where'd he go? Let's go find him the first time in a while I've been thinking about how food makes me feel better too so I just feel like I'm losing my mind and the only medication Dr. Now is willing to give me is the refill on my heart medicine but I can't even afford to go get those but he says that therapy will help me with my depression and stuff but the therapy was doing wonders for her at the start but then it's like one bad thing after another happens Justin leaves which saw that coming She's got no one there, so, yeah, I mean, therapy was doing some good, but I think they're painting her in a better light in this episode than the last one, at least. That's another thing I know he's wrong about, because he doesn't get how bad it is for me and how depressed I am right now. So I really need both, and I don't think therapy is going to make a big enough difference for this time. Hello. Hi, Angie. How are Hi. you? I'm good. How are you? I'm well. I'm well. I think I'm going to use the same chair as last time. Thanks. Good God, that side-by-side -side is crazy when you see someone from My 600-Pound Life next to Dr. Pleasure. So, Angie, tell me what's happening. Justin left. Okay, that's a big deal, right? Right, yeah. Did he leave like, I'm gone, see you later? Oh, yeah. Or he left like, I'm going to go home, I'll be back. No, he's gone. He gone, said he gone. was McDivorcing me when he got back to Ohio. He'll come crawling back eventually when he needs a roof again. Tell me how it happened. We got into an argument. We, we've been arguing all... He relapsed. That's what started it. What kind of relapse? On pills. Okay. So he had been taking pills. Mine. Okay. That's the third or fourth time he's done that. So this is like not some kind of new revelation here. Pain pills? Mm-mm, my Xanax. Okay. And it says, like, kryptonite. Okay. So he, he had stopped for a while. Mm-hmm. But Sunday, my apartment was burglarized, I guess. That was his story? Yeah, I mean, he stands by that he didn't take my stuff, but... It had to be that damn Benzo Bandit breaking in there again. That guy's sneaky. He's all over Houston. It couldn't be Justin right here. Justin the jerk-off stealing your friggin' junk meds. Seemed kind of weird that my stuff come up missing and the next day he leaves. Okay. So you're without your meds right now? Right now. Mm -hmm. okay. Completely off meds. Okay. So what's, what's your plan with that? I'm going to go I'm going to talk you into giving me some more, Dr. Pleasure. We need to get happy again. Withdraws and see what happens. Okay. That's not a great answer. Okay. What does that do? Tell me what's going on for you right now. I think I'm about to freaking snap. You better run, Dr. Pleasure. She could snap you in half. She's got tampons bigger than you. Keep on talking. I can't breathe. I really feel like, I, like I'm having like maybe a heart attack or something. Have you had... You're probably having a My 600 Pound Life episode, which is too much fat and you're leaning back, so you're choking on it. Had uh, panic attacks before? No, she has Xanax. My heart. Oh, I don't want to talk about him no more. Okay, we don't have to talk about him, but we probably do have to talk about a plan for yourself. 
Because that's that's the part you have control yeah, over, right? I'm gonna take myself out as soon as I get the nerve to do it. Okay, like in your lowest of low moment, I like you'll you'll think like this. Honestly, it crossed my mind when I was at my heaviest, and I was like, man, I can't. Like nobody could carry my damn casket. It would be too heavy. Like some people would be sad, I assume, but it gets dark, man. So. Her being alone and all, all this stuff going wrong, I'm not even doubting that she's like saying that. And she probably, some part of her means it, but there's got to be some follow through there. I don't think she'll follow through. I just think she's saying it out of anger, but some part of her probably means it. Did you just say you were going to take yourself out? Yeah. Okay, so I think I just heard you say you were going to hurt yourself. Yeah. How would you do it? Whatever way I want. It doesn't matter. I think about it all the time, but I don't even know if it's my thoughts anymore. And that's why they won't give you the surgery until you prove that you diet. Because if you have some kind of depression, clinical depression, you come out of surgery, you eat for, like, emotional reasons, you bust your stomach open, you die. Like, that's why you see a therapist beforehand at least once. I had to see one once. Okay. I'm wondering if you might want to voluntarily call an ambulance for yourself. Just let him know my meds were stolen a day ago. Um, I haven't been feeling right since. I'm having heart palpitations, and I need somebody to evaluate me. And they'll take you to the hospital. And you also need to let him know that you're feeling a little little. They'll just put her on, what is it, a 5150, a 72-hour hold. If you throw around that word, they'll keep you in there for a couple days. It'll, it'll just make sure that they watch for that. I don't know who's gonna like freaking be a d to me. When has that man ever been nothing like anything but a saint? He's the fat lie detector. He's caught you in a few lies, but I mean, he's been pretty damn nice to you. I'm not weak. I'm just having a moment. I don't want to go to the hospital. Let me strap down to a bed. Is that what happened to you last time? One of the, the, the great things about my plan is it's going to be voluntary and they're going to treat you differently because of that. Because I'm pretty sure they're going to treat her the exact same threats of harm on herself. I don't think they'll treat you any different if you somebody else calls or if you call. Because you're going to be cooperative <sighs> and compliant. I feel like I can't breathe. Oh my God. Is your phone nearby? So hang in there. I'm going to get your phone. I'm going to bring it back. My heart is beating so fast. Hey, Dr. Paradise, do you know where that phone's been, buddy? You just copped a feel. So, here's your phone. Okay. Do I just call 911? Yep. Oh, God. <sighs> Thank you for calling Domino's. <laughs> What's your order? <laughs> What's your emergency? I'm having chest pains. Okay. Emergency units are being dispatched. Okay, thank you. So they'll be here. Do you think they could stop at 7-Eleven and get me a Slurpee? That might help. Here soon. I'm proud of Angela. This is good that you're doing this. I'm really worried about Angie. I'm worried that she's coming off some meds and she doesn't really know what she's coming off of and she might be having some serious withdrawal symptoms. And I'm worried about her safety just generally because of... I think she knows what she's coming off of. They were stolen from her and she takes them every day. Justin leaving. So I think it makes sense for her to go to the hospital, get evaluated, give her some time under observation just to keep her safe in the short term. Angie, they're here. He really took the chair outside just to post up and wait. Here. Hi, guys. Come on in. Hey, hey, Thanks hey. for coming in. Um, so uh, I'm a psychologist, and I've been in talking with Angie. Uh, she uh, had her meds stolen on Sunday, and she's been having a lot of physical symptoms since then, including chest pains and feeling um, dizzy and lightheaded. Uh, she also expressed some concerns about uh, maybe harming herself, so I'm worried about that too. So I really, I want her to, to get. So you had me call for myself, or you to tell them that, anyways? Isn't he required to tell if that comes up? Like I, I know there's a confidentiality thing between psychologists and a patient, 
but I'm pretty sure they're required to report something like that just to protect you. Angie, we're all here to make you safe, okay? That's what we're trying to do. So I, I want you to talk to them too, but I just wanted to get uh, my opinion in so they know how to take care of you, okay? Okay? Well, we'll check you out real quick, okay? Just try to slow your breathing down and just try to take nice deep breaths the way you're doing. I just wish she'd find a way to climb out of this like pit of despair that she's fallen into because her whole life has just been crap. She gets to this point where she has a chance to turn it all around and it's almost like self-sabotage at this point. Like she just expects the worst. Like she grew up in chaos, so as an adult, all she wants is chaos. Right, I'm just gonna ask you to hold as still as you possibly can while we do this test, okay? <clears throat> they used to put that blood pressure cuff on my forearm too because it wouldn't fit up top but uh they have a bigger one but if it's the regular one that sucker's going on your wrist yeah, your heart looks good heart rate is honestly as it looks pretty normal doesn't even really look like it's skipping a beat at all okay it, uh, usually we'll be seeing a number kind of bounce around things along that line and it's staying pretty consistent damn we're all set it's just her blood pressure not her blood pressure it's her uh, blood sugar here we need to get her a tootsie roll and she'll be set hospital will at least be able to run your blood work okay and rule out completely if there is anything cardiac but so far on our end everything's looking pretty good okay i think this is a bit ridiculous i don't need all this really I think I could just go to the hospital tomorrow. But it is what it is, I guess. I'll do You sat there, told them you were going through all this, your heart was going to give out. It could be the four crown, ro ro crown royal bottles that are behind your head that are causing it, but obviously you're going to the hospital. If you say you can't breathe, your heart, and this and that. Uh, I got it. I got Good. it. Please don't pull me. Okay. <laughs> No way. It's so hard to lift your legs if you're leaning back like that. You'd have to pull on the front of your pants, and she's holding herself on there. She's got one cheek on that thing right now. Oh, I keep getting exhausted just from moving. Yeah? What the hell? It ain't that serious. Let, let them help your leg up. You okay? Okay. Let them right. help your leg up. All right. Okay. Mm, get in there, Mr. Clean. If I fall, who will get? More than likely, more than All right. Oh, yeah, there's a little hump right there. You got to go on a fat teeter totter real quick. Do this. Cross your arms. Oh, oh God. No. Oh. I think if I just have some medication to help me with my stress and all that, it would help me the most. Because I'm just in Oh, we need a third prescription this month. Of course, that'll fix it. But before they invented that electric thing, could you see them pulling it behind the ambulance with a rope just holding on for, like, dear life, playing Mario Kart in traffic? And so much pain all over. So I'm just worried with everything that's happened that my body just got pushed to where it can't take anymore. And now I could be dying even after I tried so hard to change my life. So I'm just really scared that I might not make it. If you were really scared, you'd stick to the diet and stop barebacking the bacon every morning. So, I, she don't, she's not that scared. She's not actually trying hard to turn everything around and lose the weight. Look like she's back to justifying her self-destructive behavior again. To where she's claiming she stopped taking the medication she needs for her heart condition because it was stolen, even though we refilled the prescription for her. And she also said that she may harm herself, possibly because she says her husband left her. But we I don't think you can catch a buzz off heart meds or anything like that. Maybe if you mix some heart meds with some Crown Royal, it'll make it kick into overdrive, but I don't think that's how that works. What I've already seen from Angie up to this point, I'm not sure what to believe and what the real issues are because things don't tend to add up with what she says. But it is likely there is still substance abuse issues with her. 
that are contributing to how she's acting and what she's doing. Yeah. How you doing? I'm doing okay. I mean, Doctor Now said it better than anyone. It's self-destructive. Every one of us, when we're this big, has some form of self-destructive, like, personality. What do you? Good to see you. What's going on, buddy? I got uh, her having some chest pain. She wasn't taking on medication, but uh, she claimed she's suicidal. Oh, too. Sure. Need to admit her uh, mid-sign. Okay. Mid-sign, yeah. Let's see what that is. She got asthma, uh, hypothyroid. Um, and if she wants oxycodone, she wants Xanax and gabapentin. She wants the trifecta, huh? She's trying to get all the way to the moon, buddy. That's a moonshot. Good luck, buddy. That's a little higher to get up there. You guys are going to have to do the old heave-ho toss. Play cornhole with Angie. Toss her up there. Whoa. Just get on the... Hold on. Yeah, your breath. I keep getting so dizzy every time I move. Exerting yourself. I almost stood up. Yeah. All right, give yourself a good push back. Here, I'll get you. Get a hold of them legs, buddy. Give her the old mighty duck flying V. Oh, got it. Right now, our focus and priority is to check the status of her overall health and make sure she's not going to do anything to harm herself. Yeah, she shouldn't have thrown that one out there. She's going to end up in the calorie cell block, and I don't think they serve Little Caesars. Oh, I keep getting dizzy. Well, your oxygen saturation and everything looking good. Okay. What happened to your husband? He's a piece of, he's just a piece of crap. He decided to become a hobo. He started hopping the trains, man. Now he's somewhere out in Alaska now. We don't know what happened to him. Probably turned his wiener into a popsicle. He's out of here. Just that he's not here with you anymore? Where did he go? Oh, back to Ohio. He went to Ohio? He left you here in Texas? I need to go home. I don't belong here. He yeah, just boy. left me. You want to go back home too? Well, the priority right now is making sure you aren't in any immediate danger or having any life threatening issues. That's kind of sad, actually. I didn't think she gave a damn about Justin, but now that I see her crying, I kind of feel bad, man. The way she threw out the divorce word, I thought she just didn't give a damn. So we'll figure that out for you. And once we do that, you can do what you want, okay? All right, I'll be back and take a look at you after you get all the tests done, okay? Okay. All right. Well, they just said she's healthy as a horse. She'll be all right. Which is always, like, it's mind-blowing when they're like, hey, you look perfectly fine because you're like, no, frig I'm 600 pounds. How do I look fine? I've been back home from the hospital and by myself for a few weeks now. And, you know, I'm trying to find ways to be positive and do some things that Dr. Paradise wants me to do to help with that. So, like, every day I'm putting up positive messages to try and help me stay as positive as I can. We need a little bit of positivity. Some positive Angie is a first for us. She's been pretty negative so far. She's a negative Nancy for sure. No. I'm all alone now. It's scary to be here by myself. It helped being in the hospital for a little bit to get my head level. Because after they ran a bunch of tests on me, they sent me to the psych ward at the hospital for a few days. Then they told me I was okay and I could go home. But I've been telling Dr. No. What I really need is medication for my mind and the pain. You have told us that about a dozen times. We know that you need medication. But Doc doesn't agree. But I don't agree with him on a lot, so whatever. The one sort of positive thing that he said was that he was surprised that I hadn't gained much in the past few months. That's subtle shade, right? I'm surprised you hadn't gained much. Like, you still gained? but I'm surprised it wasn't as much as it could have been. Like, is that a win? Or, I don't know, that's kind of a win when you're in my 600 pound life world. He got my weight and I was just over 600 pounds, like 602. So Damn. he said, you know, that was only an eight pound weight gain. 
but that I need to make sure that I lose weight if I want my health to improve. But you know, I told him I'm not sure how I haven't lost weight because I went days without eating. Days. Yeah, I'm not gonna buy that for a friggin' second. You gained eight pounds, so if you went days without eating, it means you probably gained 20 and it just dropped to eight at that point. Literally, when I'm upset, it makes me nauseated. I'm not an emotional eater. So I know I'm doing better with my diet, whether doctor now believes me or not. He just doesn't give me credit for how hard I work. Everyone says they're not an emotional eater, but some chick breaks your heart if you're a guy. I don't know if we're necessarily the emotional eaters. We might crack into a couple Hershey's, but you break, like a chick gets her heart broke, she's gonna pound like a pint of ice cream, maybe a whole quart or something. She's gonna go to town on some sugar. And he also didn't give me credit for all the stuff I've accomplished besides that. Because, you know, I am also staying active, exercising a lot. And I quit smoking. All the things Hey, quit smoking? That's a big one. She's doing some kind of exercise here. Uh, maybe tender cardio now that she's a free woman. Doctor now wants, but I don't think I really need to smoke. Justin is the only reason why it's hard for me to quit smoking. It's hard to quit smoking when somebody's constantly blowing smoke in your face. So as soon as he left, that was it. I just easily was like, no, I don't need a cigarette. And I was good without a cigarette. There we go. Justin was the damn problem the whole time. We just had to get the hell rid of him. In hindsight, I know that it's a blessing that he's gone. Because now I can focus on what's important and what I came here for, which is me. And I can keep making the positive changes that I need on top of damn what right. I've already done. But Doc didn't care about that and any of my other progress and told me that I still need to go to rehab if I want to do his program. Progress, you gained eight pounds. Like we're not working in the right direction here, lady. And you know, it's still offensive to me for him to say that. And I'm not gonna be quick to forget the stuff he said to me. Cause I'm not one to take it lightly when someone insults me like that. But I still don't want to give up to show Dr. Now he was wrong. Because I can get this done on my own. I'm strong. I just had a weak moment. I just need to bounce back from that and I'll be fine. I love more than anything when they say they're going to prove Dr. Now wrong. Because if they actually do, it would be awesome. But it never happens. Nobody ever proves him wrong when he's like, okay, you're not trying. Typically, they just don't friggin' try. So I'm working on the diet and exercises. And my neighbors are giving me some support and rallying behind me to help. You know, Xavier's been coming over to check on me. And help train me to keep me motivated with my exercise. Ooh, Xavier's running a train on you? That's some spicy intel right there. I didn't see that coming. That he was gonna come in here and give you the old rap tap. But all right, I see you, I see you, Xavier. Exercises. And that's been a really big help for me. And Dave is somebody else who's been a big support to me. They all invite me over for dinner and to spend time with them and help get me. Dave, are we running a damn brothel here? Where, where are all these men coming from? stuff I need because they all want me to do well and get healthy and they're here for me when a lot of other people in my life aren't so you know I'm not giving up and I'm still pushing ahead the biggest thing freaking me out is how I'm going to be able to afford this place because after this month I'm out of money we're gonna have to start selling feet pics that's what the rest of us plebs are doing so that's really stressing me out and I don't know how I'm gonna stay here but I'm just focusing on doing what I need and hoping I figure something out. Maybe when me. Feet picks. Men get horny for hammer toe. Some of them do, actually. It's quite weird. Andy gets here, she can help me find a cheaper place and a way to make money. I don't know. All I know is that I need weight loss surgery. So I'm gonna do what I can to try and get that, and I'm not giving up. Because hey. without surgery, I won't survive much longer. She had Justin right in front of her the whole time. And she just did it right then. And I think she's stopping herself from doing it a lot of the time. This fear that you can't do it stops you so much when you're this big. It just, it won't let you try because you think you'll fail. It's fine to fail. It's not okay to stay down once you've fallen down. So no matter what, I have to figure this out and succeed. Because everything depends on us. Over the past month. I thought we quit smoking. She's a vaping. 
me and one of my neighbors, Dave, have gotten closer. We've been spending a lot of time together, and he's been a good friend to me since Justin's left. Damn, look at that. Dave from Dave and Busting. Okay. And so he's pretty much my caregiver right now. And last week, he told me I could move in with him for a month or two to help me find a place. I'm hoping that when Mandy gets here, she can help me find my own place. But look at you, Angie. You dirty dog. You put it on Dave, didn't you? You got that man hypnotized. For now, this is pretty much saving my life. Because if I didn't have that option, I'd be ready to live in a park. Because I'd be homeless. So me and Dave and my other neighbor, Chris, are packing all my stuff up to get out of this unit and over to his. So this is a godsend to me. Especially since he lives just down a few units. And I don't have to go... So she's staying in the same complex, but if you were homeless, you'd be in some deep shit, lady. Like, we're insulated for cold weather, but I don't think we're gonna make it if we were on the streets. Oh, very far. So this is saving me. And it's sad to say that Dave's already been there for me now. More than Justin ever was, but it was a very hard decision to move in with someone. Especially somebody who I've known for such a short time. So, and then leaving the apartment that I even feel stupid saying this. This was the last place I was with, with Justin. And I came here with Justin. I can't believe she's still sad. I figured she'd be over. I really thought she hated him, like genuinely the way she was acting. This was the last piece of him. It's gone. It's gonna be gone. It's hard to just forget about that. So I'm feeling completely overwhelmed right now. Now you get to give the next piece to Dave. I see you, Angie. It's just hard to be like, oh, whatever, you know? I'm married to him. It's just not that easy. But then I think about what Justin put me through, leaving me like he did. I've went through some crap because of him. And I'd like to say that I feel like it's made me stronger, but right now I don't feel that way. I'm still weak. I still cry all the time. Everybody has their moments. Guys behind closed door, but closed doors. It doesn't make you weak to cry. Every it happens to everyone. You'll have down moments. You're not weak because of that. She's been through quite a lot. I tease. I jest, but she's stronger than I think she realizes. But at the same time, I'm thankful to Dave's help and support, and being able to live with him is a huge load off my stress level. Because you know, now I know at least that I'm not gonna go to the streets. Huge hey. loads, huh? If nothing else, I'll just start grabbing these clothes and get those out of the way, because it's kind of in the way right now. Yeah, the clothes can go. Nebulizer. Wonder when's the last time she did laundry in that house? She probably smells like a skunk's butthole. That box is where you have the cart shut. I'm gonna have to take it whenever the cart is like empty. All right. Just taking this stuff a little bit at a time, I guess. All right. So I'm gonna have it over with this. You know. Huh? Okay. Uh, when you bring it back, come in the house with it, please. Oh, yeah. Where the hell did we steal a shopping cart from, though? This guy was already, like, prepared to go homeless. Like, he was just... Maybe he takes her in for a month and gives her the shopping cart and says, Get out. I don't know how this is going to go. The stress of figuring out how I'm even going to survive over the past month has still taken a toll on me. And for a bit there, it was really getting bad for me because I've had a lot of stomach pain that I think is related to the stress to the point where it hasn't been doing well. And I'm still scared about that because I feel like there might be cancer inside of me and this one's freaking me out. That's scary. I hate to hear that word thrown around, but stress will do crazy things to you. F up your stomach, make you lose sleep. It is not good for you to stress. Turns your hair gray. I don't stress. That's why I don't have any gray hair and I have people in my family younger than me, full head of gray.
Like, what if I came here and then that's it? Thanks. But cancer runs in my family. And I think with all the stress, my body got to a point where it was too weak. And so all the pain I'm feeling is because of that. That's my big fear. You want to come around here and help me? Or have you forgot what your job is? And I'm just praying I don't have cancer and trying not to worry and stress myself out any more than I've already been. So that's what I'm trying. Damn, she said, what's your job? Did she hire him? Is she paying him? Is there some kind of barter of banging buddies like going on? What is going on? Are we trading something? I need to do and stop worrying about everything at one time. All right. Grumpy. I just wish the stomach pain would stop because that's what's making me really worry. But I don't have... Oh my God, she's pregnant. Is it Justin's, Dave's, or Xavier's? I gotta know. This just got way more interesting. Turned in like Jerry Springer junk food. Time to worry about things right now. And I need to keep making progress so I can try and get weight loss surgery. Because even if I don't have cancer, I'm dead if I don't get that. I just hope that there's just nothing seriously wrong with me right now. And I can keep going and make it long enough to do that. But I'm scared I'm not going to be able to. Nothing seriously wrong with me is a bit of a reach when you're 600 pounds. There's already something wrong. Let's say something extra wrong. You check her out and make sure that's not the case. But I think another factor in this is that she's been wanting painkillers. So she may be exaggerating symptom to get that. And that's going to make it harder for us to determine what is real and what is not with her. Doctors can't diagnose you if you're just sitting there wanting something from them. It, the, she's making Dr. Now's job pretty hard. Hey, stranger. How are you? I'm a mess. <laughs> well, yeah, they tell me something new. <laughs> but you're still taking care of yourself because you color hair and, and, and color eyebrow and all those things. Everybody. Ooh, we did some makeup to get some medicine today. That. <laughs> Is that the bar we're setting, Doctor, now? These messes, they don't worry about that appearance. So the fact you are, there's a good sign. I always worry about my appearance. You always worry. Okay. That is a good sign. That means that we don't have any serious problem. So you've been having pain? Yeah. Um, uh, where's that pain exactly? It's, you, here's my belly button, okay? Uh-huh. It's like starts right here. And it goes down okay. to my female parts. Uh-oh. We caught the crutchitis. Maybe Xavier. Maybe Dave. Or somebody popped that damn band-aid from the last episode. I don't know what's going on in there. Okay. Is it in and both it sides? Over. Or, and both sides equally or just one side more? No, it's over here. It goes over to both sides and it feels swollen. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'm having, this is so embarrassing. I'm having like leakage. Um, P or, oh, P or Dave, which, oh my God. From the bladder, you mean? No. Oh, so you Well, have, the bladder too. Yeah. The bladder is awful. Like something is stopping my bladder. Like I can only pee a little bit, mm -hmm. but I feel like I constantly got to go. Okay. But my bladder is having leakage. Like I'm having incontinence now. Sounds like a kidney issue. I didn't pee for three days when my kidney shut down. I finally went to the hospital and they put me in the ICU. How long has it been like that? Over a month, but it's not heartburn. It's all in this area. Okay. All right. Uh, so any pain in up here? No. How about here? No. How about right in the belly in here when you push like that? That's no. Hurt? How about here? Yes, that's where the pain starts hurting at. How about here? Isn't that where your appendix is? Would it be appendicitis? Yes. So you got pain in both sides and here too? Yes. Okay. And it feels like it's swollen and like kind of hard. Mm-hmm. Okay. What is that? What's there? Well, that's a, that's a, a fat issue because when you stand up, it's pulling your abdominal wall. 
That could be just saying, I'm down in a mall tender. But it's like shooting pains and it burns when I pee. Well, you may have a. Uh, that sounds like you just got burnt by your new roommate. Uh, issues going on, so we're gonna get the ultrasound on you and uh, get the test and see what's going on, okay? Well, my mom, you know, my 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 mom's side of the family, you know, it's it's huge. Female cancer is huge. My mom had a uh, hysterectomy when she was young, but I had a leap procedure done in 2006. Yeah. I and I had part of my cervix cut off. Yeah. And I never really had it checked out again because I... Yeah, we kind of just ignore past, like, health issues and pretend that nothing else is going to happen. Just go ahead and keep rocking on, pretend nothing is wrong. You know, I've been not taking care of myself for years. I understand. Ugh. Okay, we're going to check that, okay? I just want to make sure that, like... I'm not rampant with cancer or something. Well, we're going to have to check on that, okay? Okay. All right, so we get down that, um, evaluate it and see what's going on with you and make sure everything's okay. Yeah. The cancer word scares the hell out of me. I lost my grandfather to cancer. Like, so many people... Oh, man, cancer scares the hell out of me when I hear that word. Okay, but something's probably wrong because I haven't went to the bathroom normal and... Probably two months. Okay, so there are a lot of things going on in your body, huh? Probably opioid-induced constipation or something like that. We need to figure that out. Okay. All right, so we're going to get some tests done on you and see what's going on, okay? So was that the cardiologist that you want me to see? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is there going to so be a, a We're going to get another echo on your heart mm -hmm. and see what's going on and because you're... Ejection fashion was very low, 35%, and we're going to see that you lost some weight. Maybe is getting any better, okay? What about the site, doctor? Oh, we're going to get somebody to see you, too. Okay. Oh, okay, cardiologist was probably my least favorite prior authorization I needed because they did a heart catheter to me where they, like, go in your wrist and come up and look at your heart. And, uh, yeah, my wrist hurt for, like, two weeks after that. It bruised, like, all the way down through it. It was crazy. God. All right? All right. So who's going to do that? Well, we're going to check everything for you, okay? Okay. Hey, Angie. Hey, Doc. How are you? Okay. All right. Now we're going to do the ultrasound and see what's going on with that pain. But we repeated your echo. Uh, I'm going to get the cardiologist to look at it again and see how your heart is doing. So we can I hated the ultrasound. I had to do it twice because they take that little wand and they jab you in the fupa with it like they're just trying to ram all the way through to your butthole. It hurts. Can't figure out what's going on with you and what ought to happen. But so far, there are no life-threatening issues we found. So the pain you're feeling could be just purely mechanical. They're pulling an abdominal wall. Do you feel like that? Has yes. the blood work and stuff came back Everything yet? Everything normal. So there are no issues we see with your blood work other than substances that are not supposed to be there that we already discussed. It don't make no sense. <laughs> Wonder how that got in there. It must have happened with, you know, the dope Cupid. He's just flying around throwing drugs in everybody's drinks. Well, we can get into that later. For now, we'll make sure you're okay. All right, let okay. me get on to sign in here to see what we can do with you. Okay. We're ready for you. Okay. Hey, Miss Johns. My name is Becky. I'm one of the ultrasound techs here, and I'm going to be doing a trans abdominal and a pelvic ultrasound. It's two parts to one test. And I'm going to set my machine up, and then we'll get started, okay? I had to do it twice, too, because the first one expired because the Rona was going on while I was trying to get all these authorizations done. Yes, ma'am. All righty. We still have a lot to figure out with Angie before we know if we have anything serious with her right now. It dis- oh my god, it disappeared. Where'd she stick that thing? Now that we need to address before her condition gets worse. But the more I learn about her condition, the more concerning it gets for me. Okay, I'm done. So what I'm gonna do is wipe you up. What the hell was that? They didn't do that to me. I did not get no wand in my butthole. Up and I'll help you sit up 
So give me just a second. Oh. I'm sorry. I'm so trying to get this job. All those fun female reproductive organs are in the wrong area than I thought. So yeah, the pain okay. is right here then, Doc. What's in here? Well, I, I thought all you women knew where that thing was down there. I thought it was only guys that are like preteens that are confused about the mechanics down there. I think this is abdominal muscle is pulling. Okay, but it's like stopping me from peeing and everything, so... Yeah, well, because it's it feels like I have ladder. like a horrible UTI on top of something. Yeah, yeah that that's something we can take care of. Okay, I'm gonna sit you up. I think that'll help. Wouldn't a UTI make sense if she's feeling all that pain and burning whenever she pees? I don't know. I've never had one, but I can imagine that they don't feel great for you guys. Give you a head start. So it's higher up. Yeah, it's like right here. Okay. But I mean, it shoots down to there. Yeah. I think that <clears throat> if the tests come back and there's nothing going on, I think that I might need a pap smear to check for maybe something transmitted. Oh my God, I was joking about it the whole time, but it really happened. Arby's Angie's getting the extra horsey sauce. Who's giving you that toxic? Eh. Come on, Angie. We need to do better than that. You need a rubber. We know you're super fertile from the first half of this. Well, it did cervix look okay? What about something sexually transmitted? Well, we'll check on that, okay? Yeah. yeah. Oh, God. Okay. So what I want you to do, I want you to go ahead and catch your breath for me whenever you no, have... I'm just having anxiety at this point. Are you? Okay. Yeah. If it's just an ST, don't they call it a STI now instead of STD? Well, who knew it? Xavier put you on X Factor, but that probably makes a lot more sense than everything else. Well, slow deep breaths help that. Okay. okay? So I'm actually done with everything I'm going to do. I'll get this over to the radiologist so that they can dictate a report, and then Dr. Now will be able to talk with you about it. Did you BiPAP tonight? and I'm gonna get the cardiology report, so we'll know everything by tomorrow. And if this all goes well, why don't we just ride out the liquid diet here and we just go into surgery next week? Well, one step at a time, Angie. But when the side come and talk to you, let's be open about your drug use. You wish, lady. Why is he gonna give you the surgery? We still haven't figured out what happened to you or if your cooter just got crushed. We don't know why you're in pain or anything and see what we can do to prevent that, okay? Okay. All right, Angie, I'll see you tomorrow. Okay. Nice right. to meet you, sweetheart. Good luck. When times are worst, I think of my kids and my grandkids, and I just know I have to keep going because I want to live, and I'm ready to fight harder than I ever have for that. Good. That's the best thing I've heard out of you so far, besides you just sitting here and kind of being like, this is wrong, this is wrong. Find your purpose. Find why you're going to make this work. Because you haven't even tried yet. At this point, I think it's best to keep Angie in the hospital for a while. Even if we don't find any immediate or significant medical issues to address after we complete her testing. Because every time I type on G, it seems like there is another concerning and self-destructive issue she's not telling us about that is making her situation worse. Angie is kind of a train wreck, but I, I still think she could pull it together. And my concern is that if we don't intervene and try to do something, it won't take long for her body to get to a breaking point, especially if she's still struggling with substance abuse and continuing to find people who may be bad influences on her behavior and choices. So that actually kind of explains why Dave let her move in and she said, this is what you were hired for. Maybe she was giving him some kind of medication instead of some kind of whatever I, i'm just saying that that could have been the trade that went on there well keeping her here for an extended period may help her get out of that situation and it will allow us to help her detox so that when we send her home she has a better chance to improve the choices she's making and turn her situation around because ultimately there is nothing we can do that will help her long term 
If we send her home, I think she's going to end up back with Justin in part two of this, because there's another one for sure. And change her outcome. And then she starts to take responsibility for her life and make the choices she needs. That's all still up to her. But for now, we need to help prevent her from self-destructing and killing herself. And help put her out of this downward spiral she's in. Because she can't afford to do this much longer. She really doesn't have time on her side. But with all that said, she's moved to Houston. She's already here. If she wanted to put her foot down and actually work for it, she could do it, man. She's pretty tough. She's been through a lot. She's battle-tested. She's got her guard up. She's mean to people, sure. But she has every right to be in some sense. But she's pretty toxic, man. She could do it. I could see her being hard-headed and stubborn enough to do this. But hopefully, if we get her to a better place, she takes a second chance and start doing what she needs before it's too late. I guess that's the end of Angie. So... She's been up and down. She's been down a lot in this one. Justin walked out. She's been through the ringer, but she, man, tough times don't last. Tough people do. Angie, if you actually want to be there for your grandkids, your daughter, you want a future, you want to see the light at the end of the tunnel, you could absolutely do it. it it's so sad to see somebody just not try at all because they don't see any kind of future for themselves. But that's it for Angie. So follow my Instagram, Twitter, Shauna Steele, with some underscores between it. Leave a like, leave a comment, let me know what you thought. And subscribe if you're new. If you made it this damn far, it's the least you could do. But uh, I'll see y'all later. Peace.